just to make something clear. I'm not dead. I've not been infected with a certain unspecified virus. And I have not quit YouTube. Simply put, I am working on a thing. Merry Christmas. Okay, I hope it goes well, but I don't know who you are. Noon asked. I literally have no idea who you Why are. Why I get this shit on my feed? I'm not subscribed to you, so piss off. Coronavirus? What? Who the f are you? Who the f are you? Bruh, who the f is this? When did I ask? Just working on a thong. To John Cedia. Haha, <laughs> you're dead. Babushka. Who the hell are you and why should we care? People like you should stay away to make room for others to emerge. I hate posts like this. Ungrateful, entitled creators need to be canceled. Corona. Get out of my recommendations. <laughs> Hopefully you don't get tickets to the Backstreet Boys World Tour. She quit. You boo. <laughs> okay, I don't care. A Guys, shit. try crypto Bitcoin. It's popping off right now. I'm Use beginning to think Kanye is not going to be part of specified virus. Ma'am, I've told you 17 times you have AIDS. <sighs> so you want to know what I've been doing all this time? I'm done. I'm actually done. It's been- I can't- what? It's been so long. I don't even- I don't even know what day this is. I'm not even wearing pants right now. <laughs> Hello. Welcome to 2021, everybody. Wowee, we made it. We survived. 2020's over. So I've been spending a lot of time looking at my old paintings. I started painting in grade 10 and I was, it was rough. Not, not gonna lie. I was probably the worst in the class, but I loved it so much. It was honestly one of my favorite classes the entire semester, even if it was just an elective. It's still a very fun hobby for me and I still have a lot of improving to do. But anyways, all of this emotional nonsense just has to do with the fact that I've been spending a lot of time just looking at my old artwork. And I've come to the conclusion that a lot of my paintings suck ass. <laughs> And I'm not saying that to be like quirky and funny and relatable to try to guilt you out of compliments. It's not like objectively, if you gave them to a professional artist or like anybody who knows what they're doing, they'll see a bunch of technical issues in my paintings. Remember when I said I painted the Mona Lisa? Well, I tried to paint the Mona Lisa. Oh my God, I can't. No, stop it. Ew, no, get, no, take that off. This is not the Mona Lisa. This isn't the Mona Lisa. This has never been the Mona Lisa and this never will be the Mona Lisa. Davin, Davinky, Davinky, I'm sorry. I'm sorry from the bottom of my heart. <laughs> Why did I make her pupils like that? Why is it built like that? Like, they're scaring me. So once I had finished taking a steaming dump on all of my paintings, I decided, you know what would be cool? You know what would be fun? What if I just take the time and redo all of my paintings? My intention was to redo this one, which is a self-portrait I painted. Uh, when did this happen? I just have a couple things to say about this. First of all, what is this composition? I look like a floating head. This is a self-portrait, but it's not very accurate of what I look like now because frankly, hair? I mean, we don't do that around here. What if? Instead of a self-portrait, I paint a family portrait. <laughs> yes, this is the effect I'm going with. Now, truth be told, I've wanted to paint a family portrait for a very long time now, but I never had the opportunity to do it. However, these are not regular circumstances we find ourselves under, is it not? <laughs> Listen, okay? I'm an impulsive bitch. I think we know that by now. Actually, actually, <laughs> I took a personality test the other day. You know those like Myers-Briggs personality tests or whatever they're called? Turns out I have the same personality type as 
Taylor Swift, J.K. Rowling, Jon Snow from Game of Thrones, Will Graham from Hannibal, which made me really happy because the last video I spent like 10 minutes talking about how much I love Hannibal. Oh, Rue from The Hunger Games, Obi-Wan Kenobi from Star Wars, and get this, I don't even know if I can say this. Adolf Hitler and Osama Bin Laden. <laughs> okay, I need to shut up or else I'll get canceled. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> so step one was to build the damn thing. And I talked about this in my last video, so I'm not gonna spend much time talking about it. Um, actually I will because this was where I made my first mistake. I thought I was man enough to be able to make this canvas by myself with only one pair of hands and that resulted in a canvas that wasn't stretched properly. It felt a lot like painting on a trampoline or like painting on a pillow if you know what I mean. So yeah, clearly, as you can tell, <laughs> things were off to a great start. Okay, so we have the canvas. What do we do now? <laughs> My neck is so thick, holy crap. Ugh. Yeah, so up until this point, I really hadn't put any thought into what the actual composition of the painting was going to be like. I just knew it was gonna be a family portrait. So I decided to go on Google to try to find some inspiration and I found exactly what I wasn't looking for. These photos have the exact same energy as the awkward class photo. Like, if I wanted something this white, I would have just looked in the mirror. But then, I fell down the rabbit hole of looking at Renaissance-era family portraits, and woo-wee! Whoa! Whoa! The flavor! So at this point, you know, I had a couple of ideas floating around in the old noggin, for lack of a better word. So I decided to cut and paste a bunch of objects that I found on the internet, to try to create a composition. I wanted the left half of the painting to be immersed in darkness, but I also wanted there to be a balcony with trees in the background. I wanted the wall to be painted a color that was somewhere between burgundy and poop. The railing. We can't just have a balcony with no railing. People are just gonna fall off. So the railing had to be intricate, but not too intricate to the point where I can't paint it. I want it to be curvy, like the hourglass figure I don't have. I want there to be light, like filtering through the balcony. So the edges of the railing look like they're highlighted with champagne pop. I want there to be a pillar, like a big fat white one in the left grand corner of the painting. And it has to be like emerging out of darkness, almost glowing. What if we put a vase of flowers in front of the pillar? Because we don't have enough stuff. And I want the vase to be terracotta. And what about some peonies? Yes, write that down. I love it. Okay, guys, what if the entire thing was on a checkerboard? But not like a nice checkerboard. I need like a dirty one that's like grimy and nasty and seems like it hasn't been cleaned in forever. Actually, I've changed my mind. The floor is boring. Throw a carpet on that bitch. I want a Persian carpet. You know the one from Ikea? Wait, is that cultural appropriation? And finally, the cherry on the top. You know, I want a chandelier, but not any chandelier. I want a candelabra, like those big metallic ones that are thick and like rustic. Great, I have a composition. Everything's set up to work. Now I just gotta get to painting. So the first thing I did was paint the wall in the background with a mixture of burnt sienna, raw sienna, ooh, cadmium red, and like a pinch of yellow ochre. And I got the exact shade of shit I was looking for. Now this painting bestowed upon me quite a couple lessons, you know. I've learned a lot about painting in general through this experience. I'd like to share with you the first lesson I learned, which is kids don't ever blend. <laughs> it's funny because in grade 10 art class, Nothing was mentioned about not blending. You see, when you don't blend, you kind of create like a richness in the painting and the paint also doesn't thin out as much. At least that's just what I noticed. Meanwhile, in grade 10 visual art class, <laughs> So anyways, after I was finished painting the wall, all in all, you're just a Another brick in the wall! So the next thing I did was work on the forest. And to do that, I found a photo of green that I liked on Google. And then I divided that up into eight bite-sized chunks because I can't paint that all in one sitting. My ass is gonna start hurting. And before I knew it, the forest was done. And not gonna lie, 
I'm actually pretty happy with how this turned out because let me tell you, I've committed quite a couple atrocities on canvases. I'm happy with how the foliage kind of turned out. It looks a lot like trees and also the reflections in the water are pretty cool. I didn't think I could do that. <laughs> okay, kids, time for a lesson. What happens when you shine a light behind something? Well, let's find out, shall we? Okay, so if my absolutely flawless and exquisite demonstration didn't teach you, well, let me explain. When you shine a light behind something and you're looking at it from the front end, you're only gonna see the illuminated edges, essentially. Now, I didn't understand that concept for like five days because I redid the railing like literally five times. <laughs> the first time I made it too pale. The second time it was like, all brown. I didn't make any variation in color. And then the third time I understood what it actually meant to shine a light behind something and have it look like an eclipse. So after the railing fiasco was over, it was time for me to print out. What? So after the railing fiasco was over, it was time for me to work on the pillar. <laughs> for starters, what I did was print out a couple photos of pillars just so that I could have an idea of what I was gunning for. These dudes look pretty cool. I think they look pretty awesome. These ones are too advanced for me. This one's gonna give me a headache. I'll go with the simplest one. Thank you very much. <laughs> then I started to paint it. Nothing really crazy happened, except that the first time I painted it, it was so pale that it almost looked anemic. And then I was like, no, if that's in the darkest part of the painting, it has to be almost cast in shadow. So I darkened the whole thing up and it actually looked pretty good. From then on, I started to kind of go ham, you know? I look like a gnome. <laughs> I found this photo. Give me a second, actually. I found this photo. <laughs> I found this photo of a terracotta vase on Google. And I was like, hey, yeah, why not? I mean, got space, just like, fit yourself in the corner, why not? But then I was like, hold on. If there's gonna be a vase, there has to be something in it, right? It can't just be like an empty vase. So the obvious choice was flowers. And my thing with flowers is like, yeah, they look pretty, but they always look pretty. Like flowers are beautiful in their own right. It's hard to mess them up. Like, oh, 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 you decided to put flowers in your painting. Wow, that's hot. You know, you're so creative. <laughs> but anyways, moral of the story is, you know, Flowers, they're easy to get right. Which is why I was so surprised when I got them so terribly wrong. One of the flowers on the left, it looked lopsided. You know, it looked like it had an extra chromosome. <laughs> so the next thing I painted was the candelabra and I had a couple photos of what I was like going for. The difficult part here was trying to envision what the metal reflections would look like without the reference photo. The only thing that I really could do was like grab some cutlery and shine some light on it and see how the light reflected off of it. Um, and even then it wasn't very helpful, but I did it anyways. <laughs> also, I don't have a lot of footage of me painting the candelabra because, well, my tripod broke. So the only footage that I got was this, this, and this. Kids, it's time for a story. So we went to Ikea a couple of weeks ago before everybody went into quarantine for like the billionth time this year. I came across this carpet that I absolutely love. And it was pretty small. It fit in my bedroom. There was burgundy. There was this beautiful royal blue color. Um, oh, there was like some mustard in it too. And like white, not actual mustard. <laughs> yes, it is. It's a Persian carpet. But they said it was Persian on, on Ikea. But anyways, did I need this carpet? No. Was there room in my bedroom for this carpet? No. Do I do well with carpets, given that my skin is ridiculously sensitive and I'm allergic to everything? Also no. What's that? Sorry, what? It's only $50. <laughs> So yeah, I brought the carpet home, I put it in my bedroom, I unraveled it, and it didn't even stop there because at that point I was like, you know what would be cool if I put this carpet in my painting? Now I really didn't think this through because 
How do you paint a carpet? Like, how do you paint the image of a carpet? That's a very hard task to accomplish. Carpet has a very strange texture. If you want to emulate it, to the best of your abilities? Are you telling me that I'm gonna have to paint every single strand of string that sticks up from the carpet? No, I have better things to do, okay? And I'm gonna be here forever if we actually entertain that idea. So first, I tried to kind of separate it into sections. Like there were different bands of color on the original carpet. So I decided to lay those down first and then I would go over and draw in the little details. But I still was struggling with the texture of carpet because, like I said before, carpet is very fibrous. <sighs> I sound and look insane. So in other words, here's a point of view. You're the canvas, and this is me painting on you a carpet. Yeah, I wasn't gonna do that. So, unfortunately, in the end, I just threw in the paintbrush and said, you know what, screw it. No carpet. No carpet. We'll just stick with the checkerboard ground and whatever. Am I a little bit disappointed in myself that I just completely gave up? Yeah, maybe. But like, no. <laughs> I want you to touch that little dangly thing that's swinging in the back of my throat. Woo! My room is very dark. You know, the ceiling is black because last year I decided to paint the universe on my ceiling. So that all makes it very hard to see colors correctly in my room, especially when you're painting. And not only that, my light fixture is absolute ass. It's this little dinky chandelier from Home Depot that costs like $20. So my mom and I, we took a day. We painted my whole room white. Some other things I did, I got rid of so much furniture in my room because I realized that beforehand, I had a lot of things, yes, but I also had a lot of furniture and I didn't need that much furniture for the small amount of things that I have. So essentially what I did was I got rid of all my furniture and I put everything in my closet. I've got everything, you know, I've got the records, I've got my books, I've got my clothes. I literally shoved them in this tiny little drawer from Ikea. I can't even open the drawer anymore, but it's okay because I wear the same thing literally every day, so it just doesn't matter. What else is in there? Oh, my power tools. What? <laughs> I have a screwdriver. <laughs> I have some shoes. This is like really cool. Hi. <laughs> oh, oh, I got a new record, like a new vinyl. Would you like to see it? Tears for another day. So here you go. Go put this on. Tell me when you're ready. Oh God. <laughs> on exactly. And you're gonna lean, lean your head. Yes, but then like look stoic, you know? Look like there's nobody home. Exactly. No, that's, you're trying too hard. <laughs> Thank you. An excellent modeling job, mom. So at this point, you know, we'd reached the most important part of the painting. The reason why we all kind of showed up here in the first place. It was time to paint the people. So I found these Renaissance costumes on Amazon for like $15. I already took so many inspirations from Renaissance paintings. Might as well extend that to our wardrobe. I put my mom sitting in a chair because I wanted a bit of like a variation of heights. I didn't want us all just standing there awkwardly like Robert Pattinson in a tracksuit in your kitchen kind of vibe. Now I stuffed my dad into the space between my mom's chair and the vase on the left. And even then I realized that my dad was too small in comparison to my mom. So I had to go in Final Cut Pro and do, you know, one of these. <laughs> but other than that, it was fine. He had literally one of the easiest costumes, except for the gold trim, which was actually not too bad to paint, especially because, you know, I had a reference photo, so that's good. Oh, the first time I painted his face, he ended up looking a little bit like Donald Trump, but I fixed that really quickly, so it wasn't much of an issue. <laughs> Let me say this, when I, bought my costume on Amazon, I didn't really read the description. Well, actually I did. It just, when I saw the word wench, it didn't really process in my mind. Like I remember seeing that somewhere, but I just didn't remember what it meant. It was only when I went on chapters.ca on Boxing Day to try to find some books that might interest me for 2021. And I saw Macbeth 
on their website that suddenly I remembered that a wench is just a fancy way of saying prostitute. So in other words, I'm dressed up as a 16th century prostitute in this family portrait. Today's a great day, isn't it? <laughs> Is this what the sun sees in the mirror? So I don't know what moved me to paint myself holding a fruit basket of all things. I have to admit though, the fruit basket really matched the aesthetic of the painting really well. It was a little bit of a pain in the ass to paint, especially that wicker basket. Like that was really bad judgment on my part. I'm not even that big of a fan of grapes, to be frank with you. Like when I was a kid, I would do surgery on a grape every time I ate one and I would like cut it open and surgically extract each seed. Oranges? Oranges I hate too. I, I hate oranges. Pears I have a mild dislike for, but they look good in painting so might as well just keep them in. Avocados are pretty cool though. They're some cool dudes. How? How could I have forgotten about Quentin, Quigley, Quincy, and Dula Peep? Are you kidding me? This is treason. Now, I tried to take photos of my quails to, you know, get good reference photos for my painting. But, um, well, here's the thing. Quails don't really sit still. So the only photos we got were this, this, and this. So unfortunately, I had to go on Google and just find some generic quails and paint them in instead. I mean, here's the thing. Quails all kind of look the same. Don't tell Quentin I said that. And now we're done. We're actually done. That's it. It's over. Uh, see you later. Uh, so now I'd like to just talk about everything that I think could have been improved. If the left-hand side of the painting was that dark, why is my dad so well lit? Also, the flowers, the flowers definitely need some work because they don't look like they're connected to the vase. Speaking about my dad, why is my dad the same height as the candelabra? <laughs> the candelabra is also kind of lopsided for some reason. And the chains are curved, which if the candelabra is hanging, the chains shouldn't be curved, they should be straight. Nobody casts a shadow in this painting. No one, not a single soul. Uh, isn't that interesting? <laughs> but yeah, that's really it. I hope you enjoyed this. It's pretty fun. What? Has this been under here the entire time? <laughs> My topical steroid withdrawal is burning so much. But that's a story for another time. <laughs> These videos take a lot of time to put together, so thank you so much for just being so patient. I hope you enjoyed this, and it was very fun catching up with all of you. Anyways, toodaloo! <laughs> Moving on. So the next thing, eh, I'm, eh.